Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Gavin Fish and this is my channel. I'm thankful that you would take some time out of your day to join me as we continue our discussion of the case of the homicide of Gabby Petito. Uh, the suspect in this case, uh, I guess officially person of interest, but at least my suspect in this case is her fiance, Brian Laundry. And uh, if you haven't been to my channel before, there is a long playlist of uh, videos that I've done on this case. So you can go back and check those out. And I also do deep dives into other cases as well. Uh, I really love documentation and I love digging into the nitty gritty on cases. And so my channel might be a little bit different from what you're used to seeing. But yesterday, I did a video where I interviewed a friend of mine, Professor Matthew Gruel. Dr. Gruel is the biology chair at Penn State Barron, uh, yeah, Barron, and he is, he's a friend of mine, and he happens to be an entomologist and a geneticist, and he was the perfect person to talk, talk to when it comes to the question of what was likely the condition of Gabby Petito's body when they found it there in um, Teton County, Wyoming. Um, after that video, and by the way, guys, I got a lot of positive, a lot of positive comments on that video, oh, video overwhelmingly so, and thank you very much for that. If you haven't seen it, um, I'll link it below. Uh, but it spawned a couple of other questions by a lot of people. And this one is the one that I chose um, that is pretty much indicative of most of the questions. And that that is this. If all that was left of her was bones and hair, how do you even do an autopsy? How were they able to say right off the bat it was a homicide? And I think that is a very good question. Now, also in the comments, uh, a lot of people were quick to point out that because of the arid, um, I guess, uh, what would we say that the, the arid, um, ecology of the area, why am I, I'm having such a hard time that basically it's a low humidity area, right? And it gets cold in the, um, evening. And there were even people who had commented their, their professor, he was a professor, um, out in Colorado and their, um, ecology is very similar to that of Wyoming. And, and so there probably was skin left as well, but the question still stands. If really Oliver was, that was left was bones and hair and skin, how do you do an autopsy and how do you find out whether uh, it was a homicide or not. Now, if you guys will remember, Dr. Brent Blue, who's the coroner out there in Teton County, he uh, ruled that um, the manner of death was homicide. The cause of death was manual strangulation slash throttling. Basically, what that means is that somebody used their hands and they manually throttled Gabby's neck and caused her to die. And so how do they do that? Well, last night I actually watched a very good video on duty Ron's channel. Uh, he was interviewing, uh, Barbara butcher who, um, was, uh, she's a retired Emmy chief of staff, uh, out in New York city. And she was talking about basically what we talked about, you know, how was it that she would have found a cause of death? if it were just bones. And, uh, I, I should like pause here and say, I'm not an expert in this guys. I have no forensic or medical training whatsoever, <clears throat> but I have been investigating, uh, a manual strangulation case that uh, has become near and dear to my heart. It's the case of Amanda Winkowski. I'll also link below a playlist where you can check out the Amanda Winkowski case in Amanda's case, the court or the medical examiner ruled her death an accidental opiate overdose, but there was evidence that, um, she had been strangled. Now, when it comes to the um, anthropological evidence of strangulation, if we're looking just at bones there, which is what they would be doing in Gabby Petito's case, there is a telltale sign and it is what is called a broken hyoid bone. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I want to show you, uh, this is basically uh, the larynx area 
of our bodies. And this bone right here on the top is the hyoid bone. It basically is a U-shaped bone that um, basically the shape of my hand right now is the is the way that it is situated in your neck. It's suspended by um, by uh, tendons and uh, a lot of the muscle straps in your neck connect to this bone. It helps you to speak, it helps you to breathe, helps you to swallow. And it is the source or the, I guess the place on which the larynx hangs. Okay, it's a very important bone. It's not connected directly to any other bone in the body. And uh, when the when there is a throttling incident, many times what happens is the hyoid bone breaks. Now, um, let's see. Just to give you guys a really good view of this, you know, this is the this is the inside shot of it. it it's basically made up of. Um, five parts, right? You've got the body right here is what they call it. And then they call this the greater horn or greater cornu. And, you know, there are two of them. And then this is called the lesser horn or lesser cornu. Now, what's interesting about this bone, at least to me, is that um, it's one of those bones that develops over time. So uh, when we're young, the the horn area of the hyoid bone is connected by cartilage to the body. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Any yeah. So this this area where you're kind of seeing this stripe right here, that is that is uh, cartilage. But as we age, then it gets connected by bone. And so by the time you're my age, I'm in my mid 40s this is all one bony piece, okay? Um, but in young people, uh, it is not. There, there's cartilage in here. And so what I wanna show you is a couple of, um, couple of x-rays uh, to kind of give you an idea of what an x-ray looks like when you're looking at a young person's hyoid bone. This is an x-ray and I'm doing this with the permission of Amanda Winkowski's mom, but this is an x-ray of her hyoid bone. Uh, and you can see in Amanda's case, while it looks like these two pieces are like broken off, in her case, there is, it, it, she's young, she's 20 years old. so there's cartilage in between the main body and the two horn sections. And I'm going to kind of go through these a little bit. When I first looked at this, I went, she's got a broken hyoid bone. And it actually still is possible that her hyoid bone was compressed and even broken. I mean, from this angle, it does look broken. But the, uh, the medical examiner in this case ruled that it, it had not broken. Um, the, you know, I think this is actually, uh, let me take a look. Yeah, right to left. So that big gap right there, this is looking at the other direction. That's that same gap. In my opinion, that's, a, that's probably a dislocated hyoid bone. But of course, I'm not, I'm not a pathologist so, or a radiologist. I, I really can't say for sure. But I think that that is a broken uh, hyoid bone. In her case, there, there are other places... In the, um, in the neck, let me uh, zoom out of this. This one that is labeled number three, this is the thyroid cartilage. That section also during a manual strangulation can be compressed and it can show cracks uh, in a lot of different places, but it's very typical to see a crack uh, here in the middle. And then, uh, when you get to the sides, these sides tend to break off. And the reason that I know that is because I saw an interview with a medical examiner who, who described that. In fact, in Amanda Winkowski's case, she had broken cartilage, thyroid cartilage. And the second medical examiner noted that, but the first medical examiner went, no, 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 no. I think I probably broke that. It wasn't broken before I got my hands on it. It's so brittle. I, it, I probably broke it. So, um, so basically what I'm getting at is uh, anthropologically speaking, these two things, the hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage are things that break 
um, or fracture or dislocate when there is an, uh, a throttling event. Let me show you another couple of examples of this. So um, this almost looks like Amanda Winkowski's, uh, 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 I'm sorry, this one. This one almost looks like Amanda Winkowski's uh, hyoid bone, right? There's, a, there's a, that wide gap. That is... Um, according to the article that I found on this, that is a break of the hyoid bone. But Dr. Um, Butcher from um, Duty Ron last night, when I was watching her, she said it's very typical to see um, the horns break. And so if you look at where this arrow is pointing right there, that is a broken horn. Um, uh, this is another one that is broken and, uh, you know, I mean, it's very broken. Uh, and then here's one where both horns are broken. And uh, then this one shows uh, fractures. You know, they're, they're not completely broken, but they're fractured. And this is all evidence of a manual strangulation event. I've got another um, kind of look at this. Uh, you can see the, uh, let's zoom up here. Uh, this one's kind of looking top down. Uh, there's a fracture right there on that greater cornu. Um, and then here is a fracture of the cornu on this side. And, uh, you know, this one is a little harder to see, but, um, there's a little fracture there, but then there is a completely dislocated, uh, piece of the greater horn, uh, there and there. So that is what, um, that is what, Forensic pathologists are looking for when they look at CT scans and uh, radiographs, radiomicrographs, X-rays of, um, of you know that section of the hyoid bone. So the question again that we started this out with is: if all that was left of her was bones and hair, how do you even do an autopsy? And now you know the answer to that question. It, it likely was done mostly with CT scan. I'm, I'm sure there was some um, actual in-person manual inspection of Gabby Petito's uh, remains. I'm sure it was respectful and done in a very scientific way. Uh, but I think that they have plenty of evidence that uh, she was um, she was throttled, right? She was strangled manually. Now, as to the question of how could they do it right off of the bat, if they're if her body was only bones and just a little bit of skin and hair when they found her, then they would have a direct line of sight view of the hyoid bone and the cartilage around the larynx, right? They would be able to see that. I'm sure when they found her in the field, they were like, she was strangled. And um, how did they get to manual strangulation instead of, um, instead of, using a garret or some type of ligature or a rope or something like that. I would imagine uh, this is just speculationville here, guys, but I would imagine based on some of the comments that we got based on the area and the climate, the humidity and the heat and the cold and so forth, that there was some skin left and uh, bruising around the neck tends to be a little more fuzzy when it's done by a big object like human hands. And when it is done with a rope, it is very located. You can, you can see it very, very specifically. And even when skin dries out over time, the vital reaction, that bruising that happens um, in the neck muscles underneath and in the, um, in the skin, uh, that will stay. That will stay stained. So that's, I guess, my, uh, my input on the question of how could they tell if she was manually strangled. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you did not, I don't mind if you give it a thumbs down at all because that lets me know what kind of content you want to see. I, um, I appreciate all of you who subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, uh, and you feel like I deserve it and you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And then lastly, I just want to remind you that um, on my website, let me uh, let me actually go to my website here real quick. Um, oh, I got to share the screen here. 
If you go to my website and you want to contact me for any reason, just uh, just click here and you can fill out this form. You can keep it completely anonymous if you have any documents that you want to upload to me. I do want to remind you as well that uh, if you want to suggest a case, uh, my uh, my patrons on my Patreon account have permission uh, on my website to uh, suggest cases and vote on cases. We've got four or five in there that I'm starting to take a look at, and we've got some patrons that have uh, uploaded some uh, some documents even. So I'm starting to look at other cases that you guys might want to see. If, uh, if you would like to support me in a monetary way, you can head over to patreon.com slash Gavin Fish. I'll leave a link below. And uh, that gives you access to suggest cases uh, on my website. Okay, with that, I will bid you adieu and I hope to see you the next time. Take care. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.